everyone and welcome to Dwellers in the Dark. I'm Dave and today we're going to continue our scenery and painting series. We're going to hook up with Aaron, our commission painter, and we're going to look at painting up 36 orc warriors for Lord of the Rings. Right, to what standard? 12 of them, a warband, is going to be painted up to tabletop standard. The next 12 is going to be painted up to high level tabletop standard. And then the third uh, batch of 12 is going to be painted up to the highest standard possible. So, I want you to journey with me as we sit down with Aaron and we go through bits and pieces as he moves through the various stages. Now the first aspect is we're going to be looking at the first 12 because we're going to paint them up to tabletop standard. And we're going to be looking at things like brushes, we're going to be looking at things like brush cleaners, we're going to be looking at some of the basic paints that he's going to put on, the colours, uh, colour schemes, and we're going to bring it up to uh, a level that you can just put on the tabletop and you're happy with that. Aaron wants to focus a bit more on batch painting, which is actually painting a whole unit at once rather than an individual, so we're going to look at that as well and uh, we're going to pick his brains for a few hints and tips. So I'm going to sit down with Aaron, uh, I'll paint along doing a few bits and pieces, but most importantly we're going to focus on his expertise and his knowledge and I hope you enjoy the journey with us. Okay, cheers guys. So Aaron, what's the, um, what's the main reason behind this tutorial? The main reason behind the tutorial, well there's two main reasons behind it to be honest. Firstly, it's to look at the basic concept of how to paint um, quickly to a certain degree but also to show how batch painting works and also that regardless of how quick painting is it is still time consuming whoa batch painting what's batch painting batch painting is in essence taking up a load of models and painting them in such a manner that allows you to paint them in stage by stage. The stages being the basic colours, and you'll paint the same basic colour on each model, and then go to the next basic colour, and then the next basic colour on all of the models. It allows you then to have a uniform for all of that particular squad, or or band, war band, depending on the you know the game that you're playing, and one thing that I've noticed with a lot of tutorials out there, and there's no disrespect to them whatsoever because they do show you some incredible stuff, is that I've not seen one yet that shows you how batch painting works, not just how it works, but how long it can take, and it's not for everybody and sometimes it's always good to know whether you're capable of doing it whether you've got the patience to do it for a start um, and that can be changed as well um, depending on how many models you have uh, one of the techniques that I've learnt over time is that there are three different formats you've got the one for the person who isn't quite with the idea of it and therefore you have a smaller amount of models to paint at a time. How many do you mean by small? Probably five, around five, six? Okay. Around five models and I think that's a good, a good start and a good standard. If you're at my kind of level where you're looking at more around the 10, which is a good size war band or squad, and sometimes if you're incredibly patient and you really, really want to go full hog, go 20, 30 models. It's, it's completely up to you. Um, now, my primary game is Warhammer 40,000 rather than Hobbit. And I do dabble in The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and other systems as well. And my main army is known as the Tyranids. And there are a lot of models when it comes to the Tyranids. And you do need to learn to paint quickly and to be able to use techniques such as batch painting to be able to cre be able to get those standards up as quickly as possible and the f the qu the longer you go with batch painting the quicker it becomes and you probably cut out a few hours of painting if you'd paint them individually all right excellent 
Um, listen, you mentioned time, and I think mm. time is one of the most important factors you wanted to get across. In yes. Because we're going to be doing this in stages. Five models, ten models, multiple models. What sort of proportion of time are we looking for for each batch for people to be aware of? I think it depends on what the base colour is. And sometimes with certain base colours, especially the lighter colours on darker surfaces like black primer, uh, you tend to have to layer them up quite a lot. And just to get the right texture and the right consistency that you need. Some people use um, a lighter primer for that. Um, but I prefer black um, because it gives you a much darker, much dirtier look, which you would expect. Okay, Aaron, um, I'm going to move on. You've painted up these 12 orcs in what seemed like no time at all. Um, you've got them to the first stage. Do you want to talk me through what the stages are? Yeah. Um, basically, picking out what I can in regards to the actual orcs themselves is I was looking at the armaments on the orc, the armour itself, the, the weapons and stuff like that. And I've picked out in respect to that to be the main base colour. So I've used a Citadel base colour known as Lead Belcher, um, which is a very, very uh, dark iron colour, um, normally used for uh, sort of swords or for um, really dark armour itself, which of course orcs you would expect to have. Now that I've got to the stage with these 12 orcs, let's talk about 35 minutes. Um, now that's me being neat. Now you don't have to be neat. Um, but it's better for the latter stages because one problem with metallic paints is the fact they're metallic. And they've got little bits of sort of uh, material in there which can actually come through if you get it over certain areas which are designed for cloth. So you'd need, if you do manage to do that, you would probably have to do two, maybe three coats to get rid of it because it'll always keep coming through because of the sort of the silveriness of it underneath. Right. Okay. Um, so now that they're at that stage, I'll be looking at washing them with another Citadel paint known as Null Noil. There's two formats for this. And there's a brand new one, which is the gloss one, which is actually really, really good for metals. Um, but there's also a matte one, which I'm likely to use because I feel that for orc armour, it's going to be quite dull. And um, as a result of that, I'll use that particular one. Now, the gloss one's great because it gives a bit more shine, which is really good for metals. Okay, so we're actually doing 36, and we're doing them in batches of 12, yeah. and the end result for each of the 12s, is um you will be looking at a simple warband um for each of them one's going to be at a basic standard so basic tabletop standard one's going to be at a good tabletop standard and one i'm going to go a little bit further with and that's where you're probably going to see lots of rust and lots of little details in regards to the actual models themselves so there'll be more of a higher standard in regards to even a you know a good standard tabletop, and with those that kind of army, you're probably looking at them being pretty eye catching, and you're likely to get people to be sort of looking at them going, that's pretty good, and maybe putting them in for best painting may not win them, but you know you'll be in that top six to ten. You never know. So excellent. Listen, let's crack on quickly because uh, we have a lot to do. Mm. Uh, I want to talk about brushes. <laughs> I know when I mentioned, <laughs> I said let's talk about brushes. You went, oh no, brushes. Um, yes. Yeah. If you just want to talk quickly through the brushes that you're using. Okay. But also on top of that, if you'd like to mention some of the ad additives that you use to yes. help you work with the brushes. So, uh, let, let, let me guide you. Show us the brushes you're using on this project so far. Right, brushes I am using at the present moment will be... If I pick these out... Are going to be... These... Five brushes. Now, these five brushes are all sable. 
Um, the reason why I choose Sable is because it tends to have a much better flow for the paint themselves and they tend to keep a better tip than standard nylon brushes. Now, these can be quite pricey. Um, what, we have what, 10 pounds a brush there on average? Um, yes, some of them even more, especially for my, you know, my little babies in essence, which are these two, which I'm thankful for my sister for buying for me. So, <laughs> um, which are Series 7, Newton, uh, Windsor & Newton, Kalinsky brushes. Now these are the top of the range brush. Kalinsky is the softest sable hair you can get on the market. As a result of that, these tend to be pretty hefty in price. So you're looking minimum 12 to 15 pounds, upwards of about 20 to 30. Um, now that's obviously depending on the size of the brush. And the more hair on the brush, the more expensive it becomes. This is a zero zero, and these are this is a triple zero, um, which are very fine uh, detail brushes. I have another sable one by our amazing friends at Element Games, who do their own set of brushes. Shout out! Shout out! <laughs> <laughs> and this is what they class as their regiment brush, which is a num as a number one, a workhorse. This one, um, absolute workhorse, brilliant for doing base colors, especially on small models. Uh, you don't need anything bigger than this, really, unless you're absolutely lathering it in one colour. And that's when you start going to the twos and threes. Um, or go to a basic Certel brush, it's fine. Or Army Painter, doesn't really matter. Now, after that, we have the Citadel Artificer. This is a steep price, but a very, very good brush. Um, not as good as the... Windsor and Newtons, but it's a very, very good brush and pretty, pretty reasonable for its, for what it does in regards to its price. Depending on where you get it from, Games Workshop, I think it's a twelve pounds. If you go to your local stores, you usually get fifteen to twenty percent off, so it's quite worth it. And of course, another Element Game one in a fine detail uh, brush, which is a stubbed version, so it's short bristled instead of long bristle and uh, very very good for getting into the nooks and crannies um, in regards to some of the actual models and the details brilliant so listen we lather paint brushes with loads of paint <laughs> um how do you avoid them being destroyed especially right. like 10 to 12 pounds each yes this one which is the citadel one as you can probably see i don't know if you can there's a little bit of paint in there right at the edges um, which is an unfortunate thing that can happen. I have managed to get hold of something which is known as the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preservative. Now, these, this little pot of soap, I suppose you could class it as, is specifically designed to help clean your brushes. Um, it's fantastic for it to be honest. And what you tend, to, what you do with this is you open up the tub. It just looks like a some kind of weird resin soap. Um, let's open it up. Let's go for it. Uh, oh, it's it's face cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hardened face cream. <laughs> but yeah, the idea behind this is that it helps you be able to clean out any dried in paint. Now, as everybody does, um, regardless of whether you're new uh, painting, especially if you're an amateur painter or a, or a veteran painter, you tend to have a habit of going into your paintbrush and it goes all the way up the actual brush itself as proof. And what happens is it'll seep down into the metal rim at the top of these brushes which hold the, hold the bristles in. This stuff with a bit of water will pull that out. So you pull it out with that, dip it in some water, and literally circles on your palm like so. Try not to ruin it. And that will basically clean it out. You'll have to do it a few times, but it will do its job. Well, listen, we'll, um, <laughs> we'll crack on from there because we've still got a lot more to paint. And we're Indeed. doing a few bits and pieces with um, new concept for... Uh, can I get that there? 
some of the Barrow Whites and some of the Spectres um, for this. This is our Angmar force, isn't it? We're, yes. We're looking uh, at yeah, we're looking at trying to create a little uh, Angmar force for uh, some of the scenery that's been created. And uh, fingers crossed, it'll look pretty damn good. Excellent. So. Well, listen, guys, we'll leave you there and we'll crack on more stuff and we'll come back with, with updates. Um, hope you're enjoying it so far. Bye for now. <laughs> So basically, we've been doing a little bit of timing, Aaron, and um, you've looked at getting these guys, if I may. May I have one of those, yeah, please? Yeah, go for it. Anyone? Looking at getting those guys up into um, base coated and, well, under coated, the base actually uh, done up, and then put on, what, two coats so far? So we've got the armour and we've got the cloth yes right okay so what sort, of what sort of time are we looking at um, just to get those basic aspects done well so far you're looking at it so when you're starting off with a model because obviously it's completely and utterly black uh, it can be a little bit more tricky to actually spot especially with some not so great models <laughs> we've had a few little errors there haven't yeah. we um that you know you're spotting things in there when you start painting up certain parts and you realize that you've missed things and that's natural um and you for the actual uh, sort of the armor side of things it took about 35 minutes because you're constantly having to pick it out um but for the cloth as um it started it start to take a lot less time um, because there seems to be a bit more of it. You seem to have a bit more understanding of where things are on the models as well because of the metal colour on there. It starts, stuff starts standing out. Um, now, obviously, you still make slight little errors as well in there as well as I painted one a little bit too much fang. <laughs> but... Right. Let's um, uh, see if I can find him. He's in there somewhere. Um, Ah, that's the one. As you can see, there's two actually two sets of cloth on these, um, which I didn't realise at first, because he was the first one I started painting up. Now, the arms are a different type of cloth, um, because it looks like there's some kind of, sort of, uh, sort of rugged cloth over the top, which will include the kind of skirt-like, kilt-like aspect to it. And, of course, it goes over the head as well, and underneath is what looks like cloth as well, which will paint up as a different colour. Mistakes happen, easily rectified at a later stage, so that's not an issue at all. Sometimes you might catch the armour with that grey, easily rectified again, just touch over it. And about 25 minutes. So uh, just 25 the, minutes for the cloth? Just for the cloth alone. And the metal was 35 minutes? About 35 minutes, so you're looking at an hour already, and we're already done two colours. Okay. And you're looking at tournament colours, and you're looking at minimum three colours for a tournament. If you are deciding to go into them, or for a standard tabletop, you're looking at minimum three colours, which people might expect. And we've got 12 guys here, and it's already got two colours. So you can imagine how many colours are going into this, just even at a basic stage. Okay, so to summarise up, what you'd suggest is... Now, uh, history behind here is you're a Tyranid player. Mm. You love Tyranids. You've taking time to go over the Tyranids yes. you, and a batch build of Hermagons or something like that you know exactly all the car, uh, carapace and yes. the, so you know where everything is and you yes. know what to paint out to it and this is a brand new unit for you yeah, completely. and you're not fully familiar with all no. the different poses of these orcs so could we cut off maybe time off each of these stages with the if knowledge you have knowledge of the actual things yes very very easily I mean, if I did the same kind of thing that I've done here with, like you mentioned, like the Hormagaunts, and I had 12 of those, I could probably do the same amount of 20 in the same time. I see. Right. Because I know where everything is on the, on the actual model. So perhaps maybe if people just spend a bit more time looking at the model before they undercode it, before they do anything else, and just try and yeah. visualise all the different aspects. Definitely. And obviously if these models were all the same, because I think we've got two or oh, three different spearmen. There's two different spearmen. There's a couple of little hatchet guys, a couple with two-handed hatchets, and some swords in there. So they're all very different poses. And each one of these as well are probably slightly different models themselves as well on top of that, because with Hobbit and with Lord of the Rings, that 
was kind of the way that they did about two or three models with the same weapon they're at a slightly different poses indeed indeed um and that is the case here so there's a m massive variety here in regards to it some have got shields some don't and they make a difference as well as to the pose so with three paints for tournament you've got two already done mm -hmm. we're looking at an hour and a half for 12 models to have three paints on and it, they're all done quite neatly i know you've hidden some of the uh, <laughs> the errors but that's great okay so we'll uh, we'll move on from there and uh, cheers Aaron thank you no very problem. much